As it's still pretty important we wear masks, I figured I might as well try and turn this into something fun and make a modern plague doctor mask, the kind made fashionable in games like Darkest Dungeon and Shovel Knight. I decided to animate the lights in the eyes of this mask and hopefully I'll be able to control them from my phone. I started by finding the pattern for the mask online. I printed it out on A4 paper, taping each sheet together. I used our glass coffee table with a lamp underneath to get a better look at the finer lines that needed cutting. Sometimes it was a little bit tricky trying to cut things out and see where I needed to go. Once I cut the pattern pieces out, I attached them to the leather. We'd chosen to use recovered leather from an old chair that I'd found in a pub that was being renovated ages ago. I used a print stick for the smaller pieces, but most of the larger ones I just held. There's no way I'm putting pins through any of this. Um, I used a couple of bulldog clips on occasion to hold things down, but mostly it was handheld. I cut the leather out using a combination of sharp material scissors and a sort of super sharp pizza wheel we've nicknamed the Thurster, as I've cut myself on it twice already and it's very easy to do. With all the pieces cut, I could start the sewing. We have a couple of sewing machines in our house, but for the most part we use this old singer. Normally you'd use your feet to operate it with a treadle, but for the slower, more difficult pieces, I just use the wheel and run it by hand. We made quite a lot of things on this old, old singer. It works in, like an absolute dream. For simple stuff anyway, you don't get any of the different kinds of stitches that you do on electronic machines, but it's a fairly reliable workhorse. We're using a leather needle here which has a wider tip and is much sharper than your normal needle. It needs to be in order to make the actual holes, as opposed to merely moving the wo woven threads out of the way like a normal needle would. For the most part, this machine works really well, but I did have some trouble with the eyes. Most of the parts were held together with little clips, but the, glue, the eyes needed to be glued down with a special material glue before they could be sewn, because there was no way to hold them in place otherwise. The needle got stuck a couple of times on the glue, which messed up the stitch. Fortunately, with a little bit of help, I managed to recover it, and it was all fine. With the main mask done, I decided to move on to the straps. Those I held together with those tiny little plastic bulldog-like clips that you can see in the images here and here. They're super handy and they're much better than pins for something like this. I used a, sli a plastic sliding buckle to help hold the strap in place and make it adjustable. I don't have a riveter, unfortunately, so I had to sew on the straps. They're strong enough, but I don't think it looks quite as good. It's not uh, not quite steampunk enough. But still, there's no reason I can't do both in the future. I can come back to this later and add the rivets to get that look that I'm looking for. Um, for now, this will hold things in place. With everything all sewn up, I think it looks pretty good. Now we can move on to the uh, eyepieces and the electronics. So the eyepieces I'm using came from some steampunk goggles that I bought on eBay. I've taken the straps off and the nose piece that holds them together. They're fairly cheap and plasticky, but as you can see here with the NeoPixel ring, they look pretty good. I decided to give them a quick test just to make sure that the NeoPixel ring would fit. I'm running some very basic code on the Arduino here just to get a bit of a feel for it. There's a small gap, but it's not too big. The actual eyepieces themselves seem to fit quite snugly in the uh, the leather mask. I didn't need to fasten it, fasten them with anything really. The friction alone is is enough. So one thing I did notice was the design of the goggles. They should sit on your face, looking forward. The Plague Doctor mask has uh, the eyes sort of on the side looking outwards. This means that the edges of the goggles will actually dig into your face, so they need to be cut down a bit. I've got a very nice pair of cutters here that seem to go through the plastic quite easily. You have to be a little bit slow and, and careful. The extra flashing can be cut off with the uh, craft knife. I've got to be very careful with this, but it seems to work quite well. But to finish it off completely, I took a file and just filed down the edges a little bit, just to make it all nice and smooth so that it sits on the face quite nicely. The glue that I'm using is a sort of Bostic um, soft plastic glue. I wanted to find a glue that would set quite easily, but would also set clear and have a little bit of flex, just so that it, uh, it wouldn't break if suddenly there was any force applied. This glue seems to work really well. Um, it diffuses the, uh, the LEDs a little bit, but you can still see them uh, reasonably clearly. With that in place I started on the soldering. 
This was quite a long process, there's a lot to do. The main components are the Arduino, the HCO5 Bluetooth module, and the chocolate box terminal blocks on the uh, far side there. The terminal blocks I found to be quite expensive, so I think these, this pair I actually salvaged from another project or another board that I'd found. Terminal blocks are very useful because you can take the wires from the NeoPixels and uh, place them in and just screw them down. Uh, so if this means I needed to replace anything, it's very easy to do in the future. I'm using terminal headers as well, which again are a little bit expensive, but it means that if I need to replace the Arduino or the Bluetooth module, I can do that really easily. What I'm doing here is taking bits of wire and stripping off the insulation with some uh, wire cutter strippers and then I'm tinning the edges using the with my soldering iron. On the right there you can see this monstrous looking octopus thing which is a very good pair of helping hands. The classic pair, the sort of metal two alligator clip magnifying glass helping hands I found not to be very useful at all. This particular set of helping hands I picked up from a charity shop for very little. So this is this is a great this is a great find and I highly recommend getting a decent pair. I don't particularly like doing through hole soldering, I find it to be particularly difficult. There's lots of advice on the internet about how to do this properly and to how to make it a bit easier, but at the end of the day, it is a tricky thing to do. With everything soldered together, I decided to give it a quick test. Here's the, the board itself. You can see the Bluetooth module at the top and the Arduino Nano in the middle. My plan was to just to make sure that or nothing could come loose, that the wires were all still in, in one place and that the whole thing would uh, work. At first there was something loose at, uh, at the beginning but with a bit of tightening the eyes finally sprung into life. I decided to use a battery box with a on off switch. This takes four AA batteries which is sort of fairly standard. The on off switch is very handy. To mount everything inside the mask, I thought about using foam, but I actually didn't have any at the time, so I started with a uh, bubble wrap bag uh, to put everything in. If you notice on the inside of the mask, there's a little strap where the wires from the eyes, they go through this internal leather band, which holds the wires in place away from the, the nose and eyes. It's a really useful thing to have sewn in. That's not on the pattern piece, by the way. The battery pack fits nicely in the nose, and so I decided to pad the rest of it out with bubble wrap. I'm using Android Studio to make the Android app that controls the Bluetooth module in the eyes. The code is very short and the, the interface is very short too, thanks to a library that I managed to find that deals with most of the Bluetooth. So the final test outdoors. Here is the sort of idle blinking animation and when I change it with my phone I can get some red evil looking eyes, sort of angry eyes that pulsate a little bit. We can even do some animation, some sort of hypno-vision, which I quite like. And changing again, we can go back to the idle animation. All in all, I think this project was quite a success, and I look forward to wearing it in the future.